it light, sealed in our hearts. We adore by thy Holy Spirit, Shiva, by the infinite light of God, so manifest thy rings upon rings of light in this place, Shiva. <laughs> oh, mighty one of God, come forth, dispeller of darkness, destroyer of death and hell. Descend, descend to the depths of planet Earth. Come now, multiply your presence a billion times. Stand in the aura, dance in the aura, sit in the heart of every life stream upon Earth. Shiva! Shiva! Oh, living light, penetrate now. Penetrate now, Mahadeva, penetrate now. Let us be drawn up in the fire of the ruby ray, in the plains of the Dhyani Buddhas, and the plains of the Bodhisattvas, and the plains of the Buddha of the ruby ray. Lord Gautama, Sanat Kumara, seven holy Kumaras, Lord Maitreya, Jesus Christ, all hosts of the Lord, spirit of the great white brotherhood, invoke now, Shiva! Shiva! Oh, living light, draw the line now, draw the line now, draw the line now, as thou didst assist Indra, so release and free now our geothermal waters, Release and free now our geothermal waters. Release and free now our geothermal waters. Shiva! Come forth, come forth, O oh Divine Mother. Come forth, Parvati. Come forth, Durga. Come forth, Great Kali. O oh, Thou Divine Mother, Secure the earth unto the very core of the earth. Secure the Grand Teton and the Royal Teton Ranch. Secure the earth for the light bears all. I call unto the Lord Shiva in this hour for the binding of death and hell. All hosts of Shiva, all manifestations of Shiva, mighty electronic presence of Shiva, be everywhere in the earth this night, in every bush and flower, in every heart of every deer, every elk, all that roam these lands. O oh God, in all levels of creation, let there be now, we pray, the liberating power of Shiva. Shiva! I call forth the light. I call forth the living presence, Brahman, 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 come forth. Release through thy word the glory of creation, the victory of the great white brotherhood in the earth, the victory of all ascended masters and their chelas. Blaze the power of the Godhead now, O Lord. Come forth, Brahma, Vishnu, Shiva. Come forth, the Divine Mother. We greet thee in our hearts, in our temples, within, without, thou art Shiva. Shiva! Shiva is very personal to me a very personal friend, a very personal being who defies being circumscribed by any concept of him, yet he is always there. Shiva means auspicious or kindly. He is indeed both. He's known as the destroyer, and we welcome the destroyer because we want everything that is not like God where we are to be transmuted by the all-consuming sacred fire. As the third person of the Hindu Trinity, he destroys the universe at the end of each world age 
so that it can be created all over again. The Hindu trinity is defined in the Hindu scriptures, the Puranas, as consisting of Brahma, the creator, Vishnu, the preserver, and Shiva, the destroyer and regenerator. All three are aspects of Brahman. Brahman is God in the beginning, androgynous God, in the beginning with the word, and by the word did Brahman create, and without the word was nothing made that was made. Do not confuse Brahma with Brahman. Brahma is Father, Vishnu, Son, Shiva, Holy Spirit, the Trinity under Brahman and the Word. As I mentioned before, the concept of the Trinity is not widely accepted among the Hindu people. But I teach that the Hindu Trinity is parallel to the Christian Trinity. Shiva represents the stripping action of the Holy Spirit, whose love consumes the forces of ignorance and anti-love. Shiva is not only this, the destroyer of the universe, he is also the destroyer of evil and evildoers, hatred, diseases, worldliness, demon possession. He is a nourisher who bestows long life, and he will not give that nourishment until he has cleansed the vessel. When you call to Shiva, you are prepared for a purging by the holy fire of love. And if you desire to receive that purging, you will be filled with such light and God power as to not know where to turn to direct your service to life. Shiva is known as Shambho, benign, Shankara, beneficent. Pashaputi, which means Lord of cattle, actually means the Lord of souls, as the shepherd tends the sheep. Mahadeva, great God. Shiva is associated with death. He is often depicted as a demon slayer. He dances on battlefields and cremation grounds. And what he is doing is extracting the light that was once held in the cells of the body. He is withdrawing it and sending it back to the great central sun. He is first and foremost the destroyer of the human ego. He destroys the ties that bind us to human existence. You may not want to have him destroy those bonds, and yet I tell you, when he does, you will find much stronger binding and bonds that come from God and the whole universe that bind you to the soul and the heart of all people in the world, that bind, bind you more tightly to loved ones, to children, to those in your immediate family. When the human bonds are not there, the God bonds become much stronger. We are in a period of transition where we fear to let go of what is really not worth hanging on to because we don't understand the unknown. The unknown is real. What we have today is unreality. Reality is more rich, more intense in color, intense in vibration, in thought, in feeling. Everything you experience today, which is always ephemeral, it always passes away. Nothing lasts in the human condition. You can experience the same things at a higher level and they never pass away. Love never passes away. Wisdom doesn't pass away. Caring doesn't pass away. The true love of soul to soul, it becomes immortalized through Shiva. It becomes immortalized through Vishnu, through Vishnu and through Brahma. Shiva is also the death of death, the bestower of immortality on his devotees. If you are not willing to have your mortality destroyed, then Shiva cannot give to you your immortality. There is something of an attachment to that human skeleton and that human body. Even the highest yogis have had moments of great burden and sorrow in leaving that body the final time in their maha samadhi. There is simply an emotional attachment to the body we have had 
and work through and live through and experience through for this embodiment and many embodiments. So it is a natural sensation and you should be aware of it and not be fooled by the very fear of the body elemental itself who is also attached to the body because that's his job. He takes care of the body, no more body, no more job, where is he going? <laughs> so you have to comfort your body elemental like you would a little child and promise him that you are taking him or her with you to the next octave because he or she has been a very faithful servant and of course body elementals cannot be faithful servants if we don't give them the right food and exercise and wonderful spiritual teaching and spiritual practices. Shiva is the embodiment of yogic power that destroys the bonds binding the individual spirit to the world and so gives liberation. What I'm trying to tell you throughout this conference by every possible angle I can reach you that you can have God and the whole universe and yet not lose the levels of human experience that are necessary to your evolution and you're working through your psychology. It's not like if suddenly you embrace God as a totality and as your total being, you won't know yourself and no one else will know you. I can tell you the people who count will know you. The people who don't count and shouldn't be your companions in the first place, they will somehow not be around anymore. You have to expect to make new friends as friends, your ascended masters, the angelic hosts, and the archangels. And when you do, you'll meet millions of people upon earth who also associate in those circles. After all, there are some things that are worth a transition for. There are some things that are worth going up the steps and leaving behind some of the old landmarks. If you really love your friends and companions, even though they may have led you astray here and there, and you really feel for their souls, the only way you can ever help them is to go up a couple of stairs and then step down and reach out that powerful hand and arm you will have acquired through Hercules and Archangel Michael and pull them up and be able to transfer to them the light you have gained. And that doesn't come overnight. You can't be a student and a teacher all at once. You need to be someone who is working on that path until you come into a true strength where you can help those ones whom you never could help when you were at an equal footing with them at a lower level of consciousness. Shiva often appears as a yogi with a snow white face, matted hair, and dressed in a tiger skin. He is the friend of yogis who helps them to attain their goal of God realization. You are yogis whether you practice any kind of physical yoga. You need to remember that. You may be a, a bhakti yogi. You may be a jnana yogi and so forth. So we are all yogis because we are taking upon us the yoke of Jesus Christ, which is light and which is easy. My burden is light, my yoke is easy. We are yogis under the ascended masters. We are yogis as we perfect the science of the spoken word. So he dressed up as a yogi is a true friend of all yogis. We see him in this role in one version of the Vedic myth of the winning of the waters. In the myth, the Vedic god Indra slays the serpentine monster Vritra, thereby releasing the waters to flow to the sea. As I mentioned, this myth is symbolic of the practice of yoga. Indra represents the self and the waters represent the light released from the chakras to flow upward to the crown. In one version of this story, Indra could not succeed without Shiva. Shiva lends him the strength he needs to conquer Vritra. This tells us that it is Shiva who will give us the strength we need to overcome the serpent of the not-self so that we can attain enlightenment. Shiva is also known as the distributor of the seven holy rivers. This means that he is the one who distributes the light to our chakras and will help us control the light in our chakras and balance the light at each of the levels. You will notice that I have the wonderful dancing Shiva in front of me on the altar. I have carried this Shiva with me all over the world in my stumps wherever I speak. Shiva stands between me and the dweller on the threshold of anyone in the audience or anyone in the world 
or any force on the astral plane that would attack the delivery of the word from this altar. I think it's one of the most important statues that is the property of our church and that works in a, a, an absolutely fantastic way. Shiva's consort or Shakti appears in three primary forms. Shakti means power. Shakti means the feminine principle of the Godhead, the divine mother who went forth out of the divine whole. Shiva's Shaktis are Parvati, daughter of the god Himalaya, a benevolent goddess and devoted wife. Then there is Durga, the unfathomable one, known as the destroyer of demons, and Kali, the power of time. Kali is a symbol of destruction who appears with black skin wearing a necklace of the skulls of demons. Yet she bestows blessings upon those who seek knowledge of God and is known to her devotees as the Divine Mother. And as you know, she was the chosen God of Ramakrishna. Lord Shiva lives on the summit of the sacred Mount Kailas in Tibet. He is pictured there both as a solitary ascetic and with his Shakti Parvati. This is a legend told by John Snelling of how Parvati contributed to the origin of Shiva's third eye. Legend describes Parvati playfully covering her Lord's eyes as he sat in meditation on a peak of Himalaya. Instantly all light and life were extinguished in the universe until out of compassion for all beings, the God opened his third eye which blazed like a new sun. So intense was its blazing that it scorched the mountains and forests of the Himalayas to oblivion. Only when he saw that the daughter of the mountain was properly contrite did he relent and restore her father to his former estate. This legend shows Shiva as the destroyer. The opening of his third eye represents the opening of the eye of knowledge that destroys ignorance. Swami Karapatri writes, the frontal eye, the eye of fire, is the eye of higher perception. It looks mainly inward. When directed outward, it burns all that appears before it. It is from a glance of this third eye that the gods and all created beings are destroyed at each of the periodical destructions of the universe. Shiva is also known as the Lord of the Dance. Nataraja. His dance destroys the fetters that bind the soul. He dances triumphantly on the demon who personifies ignorance and illusion. One scholar writes, when dancing, Shiva represents cosmic truth. In his upper right hand, Shiva holds a drum which represents the sound from which the universe was created. His upper left hand holds a tongue of flame. His left foot is raised, telling us that we can raise ourselves and attain salvation. Ananda Kumara Swami writes, the deepest significance of Shiva's dance is felt when it is realized that it takes place within the heart and the self. Everywhere is God. That everywhere is the heart. Shiva is the great guru who comes to save us from ignorance, from forgetfulness and our human ego. His kindly love is a fierce love that strips us of all that separates us from oneness with him. Shaivites repeat the mantra, Om Namah Shivaya, in order to attain union with Shiva. Together. Om Namah Shivaya, 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 Om Namah Shivaya. Om Namah Shivaya, 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 Om 
Oh, no, no, she's 